Hi there. Good evening. Welcome to Bible study today. It's so good to have you here. Can we pray before we kick off? Father, we just thank you for today in Bible study. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you have in store for us. We ask that you just breathe upon this word. You breathe upon this moment and that you speak life into this moment that nobody will remain the same after this moment. Be glorified, Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. There's a quote on the internet that says 1% create, 9% contribute, and 90% consume. So all it takes is to start contributing, and then you have a better advantage. But then if you decide to go an extra mile to create, then you have an advantage over the 99 why did I start with that statement? It's very easy for us to get overwhelmed by looking at the things that could have been and we forget the things that are, are right now. And we look at our losses, we count our losses, and we feel like God has been unfaithful, God has been ungracious, things have been unbearable, and we refuse to take a posture that will determine a next season for us. And today, I want us to continue from where we stopped last week and in the conversation around how to position to thrive, how to position to see the manifestation of the promises of God, how to position ourselves to walk in the fulfillment of prophecy, how to position ourselves to not just see ourselves the way that God has seen us, but to receive all that God has in store for us because we would be doing ourselves a great disservice if all we do is live in this fantasy bubble and that every time we say amen, it really means that it is so and it is done. Instead of putting in the work, putting in the commitment, putting in the drive and the desire to obey God every step of the way, to see the very results that he has earmarked for us. And today is an invitation to Renew our commitment to say yes to God at every point in time, at every journey and junction that he brings us into. Let's begin, shall we? How do we position ourselves to receive from God in this season? How do we position ourselves to thrive in the very rooms that God has in store for us without losing sight of who he has called us to be? The first thing that we must understand in positioning is that we must come into an awareness of who God really is so that we're not just looking at God from the perspective of what he could do for us, but we're seeing him from who he really is to us. You see, it's very easy for us as a people to just assume that because things are a certain way, that that is the best that could be of that thing. However, have we wondered that some of our greatest limitation is birthed out of the fact that we do not have the right understanding of who God is, what he looks like, what he feels like, what he sounds like, that we are limited in our fears and in our unbelief. We're limited in the very pictures that we have allowed to flood our heart, to flood our minds and to flood our very beings that we no longer see God for who he really is and the promises that he has made to us. And so, how do you see God? What knowledge do you have about God? What knowledge do you have about the promises of God? What knowledge, what understanding do you have about God? That we're not no longer just looking at God as this abstract figure, abstract personality that has the potential and possibility to empower and enable us to fulfill life and destiny. But we see God for who he is as help for us, as anchor for us, as strength for us. And above all, we see him in the light of his very promises to us. You see, the Bible tells us how that God is not a man to lie. Neither is he the son of man to go back on his word. That everything he has said, he will watch over his word to bring it to pass. So could it be that the reason why it seems like prophecy is not fulfilled it's because we don't have the right estimation of the person of God. We don't have the right picture of the person of God. We don't have the right 
um, understanding of the person of God. Daniel 11 to 32 says that those who know their God, right, they will stand firm and they will do exploits. So what do you know about God that will endorse, that will empower, that will strengthen you to stand firm and do exploits, that will not let you to cower in fear, that will not let you to walk away in disappointment and in, in uncertainty, but that you see the picture of God for who he really is. Are you able to stand firm and do exploit based on what you know about God? What do you even know about God? And what are you willing to know about God? The truth is that many times we see God based on our experiences. We see God based on our past. We see God based on our environment. And our definitions of God are sometimes skewed. They are sometimes thwarted because we're not looking at the image of God that he has given unto us. We're looking at the image of God that sounds feasible to our fears. We're looking at the image of God that suits best the lies that the enemy has encompassed our lives with. And so when we begin to live in that fear, when we begin to live in that timidity, in that um, in that 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 place where we are just constantly afraid afraid of the future afraid of what could be afraid of the images that are coming up around us and in our lives if we live constantly in that place of fear then we will never come out to achieve the very things that god has called us to achieve because we're living in fear and so our our pictures are limited our pictures are restrained our pictures are constrained there is no broadness. There is no ability to dare to do better, to see better, to achieve better from the basis of the promises of God. All that we have is our fears. And God is saying to us, what do you know about me? What do you know about me? What do you know about me? Because your knowledge of God helps you to walk in a new level of trust. Your knowledge of God helps you to walk in a new level of confidence, of hope, that he has promised and he will keep to his word. Number two, how do you position yourself for all that God has in store for you? Remember the past. Remember the past. Now, it's very easy for us to forget the things that God has done for us in time past in the excitement of seeing the future, in the excitement of walking into the future, it's very easy for us to forget how where God brought us from or how God helped us. It's very easy for us to allow our fears to detect our possibilities and our futures. It is very possible for us to um, ignore the testimonies of time past. I remember earlier last week, I was able to sit down and I began to recall times that God has come through for us as a ministry. God had come through for us as individuals. God had come through for us. And we began to just, I began to recall it. As I, as I recalled it, I had hope. I had confidence in what was coming ahead. And it helped my faith be strengthened. It helped my faith to stand strong. I want to read a scripture for us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. From verse 10 to verse 20. From verse 10 to verse 20. And I'll read it in the New Living Translation. It says, But you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. You have chosen to know me, believe in me, and understand that I alone am God. There is no other God. There never has been, and there never will be. I, yes, I am the Lord, and there is no other Savior. First, I predicted your rescue. Then I saved you and proclaimed it to the world. No foreign God has ever done this. You are witnesses that I am the only God, says the Lord. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hands. No one can undo what I have done. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sakes, I will send an army against Babylon forcing the Babylonians to flee in those ships they are so proud of. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator and king. I am the one 
who created, who opened a way through the waters. I am making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and, and they drowned and their lives snuffed off like a smoldering candle wick. I'm going to stop at verse 17. But you see how from verse 10 to verse 17, time is taken to extol God. Time is taken to look back and reflect. This is where we're coming from. This is our story. This is our history. This is our story. This is our journey. This is the path that God has taken us through. This is the journey that God has walked us through, line upon line, precept upon precept, belief on belief. We have seen consistently that God has kept to the very words that he has spoken. And every time he shows up, every time he comes, he reveals a part of him that has never been seen, that has never been known, a part of him that is very empowering and very encouraging. And then God is saying, well, I know that you're scared of the future, but the future is in my hands. I, I know that you're scared of what is and what is going on, but I've got you. I've got you covered. I've got your back. I, 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 I'm watching out for you. I'm looking out for you. I'm not letting you to be discouraged by the experiences of the past. I'm not letting you to be discouraged by the things that you've gone through in time past, but rather I'm setting a new standard. I'm, I'm setting up something new. And we must learn to look back because the past is for lessons. The past is for lessons. When we see um, the things that have happened in the past. Sometimes we see places that we've not done well. Sometimes we see places where we need to do better. Sometimes we see postures that we didn't, we took that were not right, that were not in alignment to the very work, word of God, to the very, very promises of God. We see things that have, have hindered us, things that have short changed our outcome, things that has tried to short circuit the very things that God has spoken to us. And by coming to that place where we come to a deep understanding of gratitude, a deep understanding of these possibilities, we can then look back and say, truly, God has helped us. And the next thing that we do after looking at the past is to move forward. And that's what I'm going to read from verse 18 to 20 for us of um, Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 18 to 20 says, but forget all that is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. Forget all that. I, I've seen God heal in the past. I've seen God deliver in the past. I've seen God provide in the past. But if I keep living in the joys of the past, I will underestimate the possibilities of the future. If I keep applauding the achievements of the past, then all I have to hold on to is the past and nothing in the future. If all I have is what God did, then I'm not given an opportunity to receive what God can do. If I am so stuck in the previous victories, then I am limiting myself from new victories. If I'm so stuck on the regrets of yesterday, then I have no opportunity to set myself up for the victories of tomorrow. And so when we say forget all that, we're not saying ignore what has happened. We're saying take the lessons and move on. We're saying you need to take a different posture to see the future. You need to take a different posture to see possibilities of the future. You need to permit yourself to dream again. You need to permit yourself to see differently. You need to permit yourself to live differently. You need to permit yourself to to, to see a different outcome, to permit a different outcome. You're not letting yourself to be limited by what happened, what could have been, what, what was. You're not letting yourself to end at the past. No, 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 no. You're pressing on. Paul said, I press towards the mark. I press. I'm pressing on. I, I see what was, but I'm pressing on. I see what happened, but I'm moving on. I see where it was, but I'm shifting. I'm shifting my paradigms. I'm shifting my pictures. I'm I'm shifting my possibilities. I'm shifting my imagery. I'm shifting. I'm shifting. I'm shifting. I'm not letting myself to be limited. And verse 19 says, for I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not, do you not see it? I will make pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. 
The wild animals in the fields will thank me, the jackals and the owls too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so that my chosen people will be refreshed. So I'm taking you from a place of warfare to a place of being refreshed and at rest. I'm taking you to a place of fighting battles, to the place of coming into the fulfillment of prophecy. This is the journey that God is inviting us all to come into. Listen, my brothers, listen, my sisters. We've gone through things that the last month, somebody said to me that the, the month of May was, may, may, may never come back again and all of that. And I understand we all experienced me. We all lived through me. But is it possible for us to forget the pains of me and look forward? Not look forward in such a way that limits what God could do for us, but move forward in such a way where that we look back and we say, truly, God is faithful and truly, God has the ability to keep to his words. God is not a man to lie, neither is he the son of man to go back on his words. The very things that he has spoken, he is consistently watching over those words to bring them to pass. God does not stop being God because of the things that we've gone through. Neither does he stop being God because of our fears and our disappointments. God does not change because we are in the room. He remains God yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't need the permission of man to be God. However, he's inviting us to come to the place where we see him the way that he wants to be seen, wants to be heard, wants to be experienced. That was why I started from the fact that you need to see God and know him for who he is not for what you've experienced. Because we do not use our experiences to define God. We do not use our experiences to represent God. We do not use our experiences to showcase God. We use God to look at our experiences and see if it's in alignment. If it's not, then we change that narrative. And so we see God for who he is. We celebrate past victories. We rejoice are the things that God has done in yesteryears. And then number three, we move on from it and we look ahead. We press forward. We forget the, the pains and all of that and we press on. We push on. We refuse to give up based on the things that we've seen. Number four, we position ourselves for victory. We position ourselves for victory. We choose to align with God. We choose to stand with God. Joshua said to the children of Israel, who is on the Lord's side? There are many options today. There are many, there are many neat tangents to look at. There are many perspectives to live from, but who is on the Lord's side? Who is going to choose God? Who is going to stand and say, I choose God. I choose to stand for God. I choose to stand with God. I choose to stand in God. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Who? Who is on the Lord's side? You have many options, but who is on the Lord's side? Who is that person that chooses to stand with God? Who is that person that chooses to dream with God? Who is that person that chooses to put their lives in the hands of God and allow God to decide their next season who will say if i perish i perish i stand with god if i perish i perish i choose god every time if i perish i perish i decide the outcome i decide the future i decide the life that i want to see i decide by aligning myself with god i there are many options but god option is the only option for me and not just aligning with god but now stepping out of our comfort zone coming out of what is comfortable and complacent into the very unchartered and unknown waters that God wants to hold your hands to walk through. That many times we get very comfortable with the familiar and the familiar puts us in a place of incapability to see 
what God wants to show us, to understand the very things that God wants to reveal to us. And many times, many, many times we are so comfortable in what we know that we've refused to have faith and trust God in the unknown, to put our feet out there and to dream another dream with God. And today, let this be an invitation that you step out of your comfort zone. You step into the very places that God has in store for you. You step out of your comfort zone. You step into the very rooms that God has ordained for you. You step out of your comfort zone and you step out that even if I don't know what the outcome of my next move will be. I choose to stand with God. I choose to be on God's side. I choose to believe God. I choose to run with God. I choose to align myself with God. And so it may not be comfortable, but I'm on God's side. It may not be it may not be popular, right? But I'm on God's side. I choose God's side every time. I choose to show up like God intended every time. I will not put my head down. I will show up like God intended every single time. And finally, as regards positioning for victory or taking the posture for victory, stand in humility, stand in his presence. You see, God gives grace to the humble and resists the proud. When we, when we are stepping into new seasons, where we're stepping into the uncommon and the unprecedented with God, we must come in with humility. Because many times when we come in in our own strength, we may not understand the weight of the very things that God is bringing us out of and bringing us into. We may not understand the similitude of the and the magnitude of the very things that God is speaking in simplicity. And because it is simple doesn't mean that it is simplistic. So the fact that it is easy to comprehend doesn't mean that it is easy to do in your own strength. And that is the reason why we rely on the grace of God. You see, the grace of God helps us to do the things that God has called us to do. The grace of God empowers us to step into the places that God has set up for us. The grace of God is what shifts us. The grace of God is what prompts us and positions us to be all that God has called us to be without wavering. And then finally, standing in his presence, we must realize that we cannot do the work of God without the God of the work. We must realize that if we have to be like Moses, who will look at God and say, you know what, Lord, I love you. But if your presence does not go with us, then don't send us. If you're not going to go with us, then what's the point of going anyways? I choose to go with you. I choose to walk with you. I choose to take the next steps with you. I choose to allow you to order my steps, to guide my outcomes, to guide my next, right? We cannot afford to stand in this place and tie ourselves down in the bid to please everybody. We must learn to humble ourselves before the Lord and allow him to guide us every step of the way. And so I pray for you this evening as you're watching this or whenever it is that you're watching it, I pray that the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will empower you. The Lord will release grace over you. The Lord will release a new dimension of wisdom, a new dimension of power, a new dimension of strength, that the Lord will help you to come out of your comfort zone into the unknown and to walk with him in faith and in confidence. I pray for you that the Lord will release upon you a heart of thanksgiving, a heart that is reflective to see that even when it looked difficult, even when it seemed like you were stuck, that God came through for you, that your heart is able to identify that the situations that you seem to find yourself in is not the worst that has been, that God has come through for you in times past. And because he has done it before, he has the ability, capacity, and he has the strength to do it again and you will not give in you will not give up you will walk in the light of the very things that god has spoken to you and god has shown you you will not be ashamed i just pray that the lord will answer your hidden prayers the lord will hear your cry the lord will cause you to run and not faint to walk and not be weary you will be all that god has called you to be in the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. If you'd like to give an offering, the account details are right there on your screen. Please do go ahead and give as the Lord lays in your heart. 
your offering is blessed. I just speak increase over you as you honor God with your tithes, with your offering and your partnership seeds. I pray that the Lord will bring you tremendous increase. I pray that you've not seen anything yet, that God is set to shift you. God is set to propel you into unknown, untold and uncommon seasons, that the Lord is set to bring you answers in ways that you never thought was possible. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. And please don't forget, like I always say, ICE 2022 is coming up. We finally have our full um, flyer with all our guests present and all our minstrels as well present. Um, you can go through the flyer for more details. I believe that God will bless you and check down below. You will find that all the details that you need on are all there and the Lord help you and bless you as you do so in Jesus name. Amen and amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for giving to the Lord and thank you for your time. I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. Step into a season of rest, of increase, and know that you are being positioned for all that God has in store for you. Till I come your way next time.